Hey guys, it's Mike here and welcome to another edition of Dragon Ball Super Reviews in which I'm going to be reviewing Dragon Ball Super Episode 57 and giving my thoughts on what happened during it, explaining to you what happened during the episode and exactly whether or not I thought this was a good or a bad episode. And man, there was a bunch of really big developments and a lot of stuff that happened on this most recent episode of Dragon Ball Super that I can't wait to tell you about. So without further ado, let's get started. Don't forget to like this video, share it with your friends, and subscribe to my channel to stay up to date on all upcoming videos in the future. And wow, this episode really kicked off at the exact same place it ended last week, with Goku on the ground, ready to be destroyed by Black with the Kamehameha, when suddenly Zamas showed up from the sky and saying, No, I am the one who is going to kill Son Goku, I am the one who is going to finish him. And that's exactly what started to happen, as Goku and Zamas started off this episode with their clash together, and Zamas apparently got a really big power up just like Black because he took out that kind of, you know, hand move that he had that he was going to use on Goku back when they fought in the Kaioshin realm, and Goku went right at him as, as a Super Saiyan Blue, and they clash, and the two of them started to actually trade blows, which I was thinking while I'm watching this episode, wow, how is this even possible? How is it possible that this guy is able to trade blows with someone as powerful as Super Saiyan Blue Goku when the last time they fought they weren't able to fight, you know, as anything more than the Super Saiyan 2 level, but Zamas and Black definitely had some big power-ups while they were gone. But then the action got even better as Zamas and Black teamed up against Goku and Trunks, and Trunks was also, you know, stopping some of Zamas's attacks and Black's attacks, knocking them back. Trunks is really getting into the action too. I don't really know how Trunks was able to deal any damage or even phase them, but at this point, it seems like Trunks has gotten a lot more powerful from his train with Vegeta to where I guess he can make some kind of difference, but ultimately, as we saw later on when Trunks and Zamas were fighting, Ultimately, it was all for naught, as Trunks was really doing nothing to Zamas at all. In fact, there was one point where he stabbed Zamas in the chest with his sword, and it looked like it went in and damaged him, but Zamas pulled the sword out laughing, and then healed. You know, kind of healing like someone like, say, Boo, or Cell, or maybe even Garlic Jr. And I'll get into that in a minute, but it seemed like Zamas has now, through his godly body, has become to the point where Trunks and Goku can't even touch him or Black, and it seems like something was at play off screen that caused them to go about and do this, but wow, like all the action at this point was great, but Goku and Trunks started to get beaten down, even teaming up together as a Super Saiyan Blue and a Super Saiyan 2, they stood no chance against this epic evil team of Black and Zamas, who put them down, went up into the air, raised their hands, and started channeling a giant energy ball, which is really reminiscent of that move that Baby used on Super Saiyan 4 Goku in Dragon Ball GT. Again, there's a lot of stuff that seems like it's really reminiscent of GT and some other points in Dragon Ball that's being used very excellently here. But they had raised their hands up in the air right about to kill Goku and Trunks when suddenly another blast came and disrupted their attack, and it was another final flash attack from Vegeta. You know, Vegeta once again coming in at an awesome opportune moment and helping to distract the main villains while Goku and Trunks were pulled to safety, funny enough by Yajirobe, but Vegeta collapsed onto the ground looking like it was his time to die and looking like maybe Zamas and Black were going to kill him when suddenly Mai and the defense force, the resistance force, showed up shot in some tear gas and helped Vegeta to safety, putting all of the broken down bodies of Goku, Trunks, and Vegeta into the time machine, and then setting it to go back to the past. But Mai remained in the future, saying that she'll stay alive until Trunks returns, once again probably because she has to take care of that defense force, that resistance force, somebody has to lead them while they're gone, and she definitely thinks that it's her responsibility and her duty to stay with them 
until the very end, and hopefully Trunks, Goku, and Vegeta will come back to defeat Black and Zamas. But the time machine lifted up into the air, Black and Zamas tried to stop it with Black teleporting using his instant transmission move over to get there, but they still escaped as Trunks, Goku, and Vegeta showed up in the past, falling out of the time machine as it crashed to the ground, and Bulma freaked out. But after that point, we flashed over to see that Gawas was watching TV in the Kaioshin realm, and funny enough, he was watching the episodes of Dragon Ball Super, more or less, the same footage of the end of the Omniversal or Multiversal Tournament featuring Goku versus Hit, as Goku was a Super Saiyan Blue, and Zamas is looking and wondering, how is Goku cloaked in this god key? How does he have this power? And Gawas and him are basically talking about, you know, how he was able to attain that form. But after that, an even bigger thing happened in which Zamas was able to see the Super Dragon Balls on the screen, and he immediately questioned what exactly are these things, and Gawas explained to him what they were, which of course was a really bad idea because we already know Zamas is evil, and Gawas seems to be kind of like Yoda in the prequels, where even though there's evil people right in front of him who are clearly evil, who are clearly having big struggles of the mind and of the soul, he's still like, okay, I'll just tell you all this stuff that will give you all of your evil plans, the motivation to move forward, and give you everything you need to make them come to fruition. So there you go, Zamas. It's all good. I'm not evil, or am I? But with another twist, this episode ended in shocking fashion as Zamas showed up at Zuno's house. Zuno, of course, being the one at that at the beginning of the Universal Tournament arc, Bulma and Jocko went to ask him about the Super Dragon Balls to see where the final Super Dragon Ball was and Zamas comes in, knocking his attendants out of the way, and at that point says, tell me all you know about the Super Dragon Balls. And with that, this episode came to a conclusion, and man, this episode was crazy, it was awesome, it was out of control in all the right ways. In the action that we saw in this episode, I really have been wanting and really been looking forward to in the series since the series began, because this is the kind of teaming up with Goku and another side character who's not necessarily the main character to fight the villains, with the villains actually having some real tension, beating up on the main characters and beating up on the heroes, and making it seem like at any time anyone can die. At any time, these guys are going to seize back control, even with these super powerful transformations of Super Saiyan Blue, Super Saiyan 2 with Trunks, so on and so forth, they are still able to fight back, and they are still able to defeat our main characters in battle and make us wonder how exactly are we going to be able to defeat these guys because Goku, Vegeta, Trunks all went back to the past and they were all defeated. They were all decimated, basically all unconscious on the ground. And Vegeta, I don't even know how Vegeta survived everything he did. I guess he was maybe stabbed through one of his lungs rather than say the heart or rather than say both of them, you know, or something that would automatically kill him. Who knows? He's a Super Saiyan Blue so for all we know, he could take more damage to his internal organs. This is the same Vegeta, after all, who got blasted right through the heart by Frieza, coughing up blood, crying, kept talking for a while afterwards, so I guess it makes sense within the course of his character. And speaking of Vegeta, you know, jumping in at the end and using that final flash, one of my favorite parts of this episode would definitely have to be Trunks doing what he did before when he used the Masenko and using other moves that he's borrowed up until this point, using his father's own signature move that he used in the Cell arc, against Zamas, which did nothing in the end. Another badass moment from Zamas, who really was full of badass moments in this episode. For example, another point during the fight, Zamas actually grabbed Goku and Trunks, held them together with his body, and had Black fire a full power Kamehameha at them, and basically decimated them and left them on the ground, while Zamas just stood there and just like a complete, total badass with no damage to him whatsoever. Everything in this episode was hyper charge set up and delivered in an excellent way the animation the music the execution the fight choreography man i can't say enough good stuff about this episode but it leaves me to wonder some things such as how is amas taking all that damage and healing and not being able to be beaten seemingly by either goku in his super saiyan blue or even future trunks and it makes me wonder if in the predictions that I had last week where I mentioned that Zamas might have used the Dragon Balls to become 
become immortal if that's really what happened because man if we actually get somebody who completed Frieza's goal or the canon quote unquote version of Garlic Jr. in Dragon Ball Super this god who is powerful has these abilities like time travel now and seemingly now has immortality man how are they gonna beat this guy at all how can Goku or Vegeta or anyone even if they fuse defeat someone who is immortal I mean what are they gonna do the only way I could possibly see them beating him is either getting the Super Dragon Balls themselves in the future and wishing that away or maybe Zeno has to remove it with his own power or maybe they even contact that god who created the Super Dragon Balls in the first place and maybe have him reverse it although as we've seen with Kami and Dende they can't really do the same things individually that they can with the Super Dragon Balls, but I assume that someone who made Super Dragon Balls capable of doing literally anything himself would probably be able to be almost infinitely powerful and do almost anything himself as well. But in Dragon Ball, for all we know, once you wish to become immortal, you can't stop, so I guess they're just gonna have to use the Super Dragon Balls to wish back Garlic Jr., have him stupidly open the dead zone again, and chuck them both in there, and story. But overall, this was not only a really good episode of Dragon Ball Super, but a great episode of Dragon Ball Super. And as a lot of people thought last week was the best episode of the series, well, this week certainly has a great contendership for that role as well, because I'm finding this really difficult to even debate whether or not it's the best episode of Super so far. And if this arc continues along this path and gets better with each episode, or at least contains even half of the goodness that was in this episode, throughout the rest of the arc, well, this is without a doubt going to easily be the best arc of Dragon Ball Super, and definitely a top contender for one of the best arcs of Dragon Ball so far, but that's a lot of potential it's got to live up to, a lot of stuff it has to execute correctly from this point on, and I'm definitely looking forward to seeing if it can do that. But this has been another edition of Dragon Ball Super Reviews, in which I was talking about Dragon Ball Super Episode 57. Let me know your own thoughts down below, what you thought of this episode, episode, how you actually rate it as well, whether, you not, whether or not you thought it was really good, whether or not you might have disliked it for whatever reason, let me know your own thoughts down below, and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and as I always say, stick around, because there's a lot more to come in the future. <laughs>